gather round, gather round. Today I'm gonna be telling you guys about a story of hacks and, and luck and, and just overall shenanigans. Okay, anyways, I don't know I don't know what that was. Don't question me though. It's not good to question me. Because my answer will be I don't need no it. <laughs> anyways, today got a battle against my man Tyranitar 2. He was actually uh, one of the participants in the last battle I had, the uh, multi-battle with Joey and uh, Kaza War. But I decided to actually make a proper team. A lot, like I, I like I always say, a lot of the teams I make are really gimmicky because I try to switch up my Pokemon a lot. You know, make some, uh, you know, some variety, have some variety on my teams. But this time I was like, you know what? I'm trying to win some battles. I'm trying to uh, crush my opponent's souls. So I'm just going to, uh, you know, put together a team of power. So I lead off with my Tyranitar. He actually goes for the substitute on his Rotom, and I'm like, what? Hello? Um, substitute Rotom, I guess it's not bad, but it's not very common at all, so I didn't really know what to expect here. Uh, I expected some Hydro Pumps and stuff. But anyways, I go for the Stealth Rocks. Those are going to help me out, obviously, because he doesn't have any Rapid Spinning. So now my only objective here is to break his substitute, and uh, he's actually going to go for the Hydro Pump hit, and it's going to do hella damage. I'm not, you know, especially defensive or anything. I know I'd live one, though. I am actually max HP, max attack. But anyways, I'm going to take out his uh, substitute here. <laughs> Why is the substitute so gigantic? It's way bigger than the Rotom. Um, so yeah, take out a substitute. He is actually going to go for another Hydro Pump. Um, because of what happened here, I don't really see the point of him going for the substitute in the first place when he could have easily just gone for two, stealth or, uh, two Hydro Pumps. Uh, only allowing me to get up my Stealth Rocks and not losing a quarter of his HP. Uh, that's what he ends up doing anyways. So, I, I don't know. Maybe you thought he could kill me in one hill the Hydro Pump, but no, son. This is your favorite Pokemon. This is the name of your YouTube channel. You should know these things. Anyway, so, I was kind of debating on what to go out here, on what to go out to here, because one, his Hydro Pump did a lot to my Tyranitar, so I wasn't sure of what nature this thing was. It, it was just kind of weird. I didn't understand what kind of Rotom this was. It has Substitute, it has Hydro Pump. I wasn't sure if it was slow, I wasn't sure if it was fast. I could have gone out to my Excadrill, but like I said, I had no idea what set this thing was. Um, but here I've actually learned something interesting, as you guys see my shiny, shiny Eid Slash, which is nice and powerful. I learned something interesting here. No matter what, even if you go for the move but you don't get it off like I just went for here, um, you, you, sw you still switch forms. So you switch forms before you actually um, get the move off, which is kind of weird. I didn't know that, so it kind of threw me off there. And I really thought I had gone through the Parahax to uh, hit him with a Shadow Ball. I have Shadow Ball on this thing, which is why it's really powerful. Uh, special Aegislass is a very, very, very large threat. Large indeed! Um, but anyways, I'm going to go for the uh, King Shield here because I don't want him to attack me while I'm not in King Shield because obviously uh, when you're not in King Shield, your defense is really, really low with Aegislass. So I had to go for the King Shield. I had to risk it. I had to um, allow him to uh, get up into the Substitute. Now, it's here that I realize that his moveset is really, really ridiculous. It does not make any sense whatsoever. Um, he has Substitute, Thunder Wave, Volt Switch, and Hydro Pump. I don't understand the purpose of Substitute on this set, because if he has Volt Switch and Substitute, that kind of, those, those don't go together whatsoever. So, it, it just threw me off, and I knew he was going to go for an electric type move here, but it was actually at this point that I figured out that his um, Rotom was not faster than mine, so I was like, okay, you have a slow, Rotom that has Substitute and Volt Switch and Thunder Wave. I don't, I, I just, I threw everything out the window. I had no idea what was going on with this Rotom. Uh, but it did throw me off, so <laughs> I don't know what to say there. Uh, but anyways, I'm actually going to go straight for the Earthquake just in case he did want to stay in. I need to get rid of this Rotom. It's really annoying. Uh, but he actually ends up going out to his Glide Score. Uh, normally, I would try to go for the uh, Swords Dance, but I actually want to see if he has a move to hit me with first. If he doesn't have a move to hit me with, then I can come back in and, uh, you know, set up all kinds of swords dances on this Gliscore here. But he actually has the Ice Fang. Um, I obviously have the position, the, the advantage here. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have Substitute if he has Ice Fang. So I'm just going to go straight for the Hydro Pump as he sends it back out his Rotom. Uh, you can take this Hydro Pump, though, son. <laughs> so I just go for the Hydro Pump, like I said. He's not going to be able to paralyze me because the Electric-type Pokemon cannot be paralyzed at all, ever for any reason anymore uh, in Gen 6, which is pretty cool to be honest. Uh, normally he'd be able to paralyze me, but anyways, I'm gonna go for the will o here. I just wanna get some damage on this thing, you know, da residual damage every single turn so that he cannot uh, do whatever he wants with his stupid Rotom. This weird, 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 weird Rotom that he has. <laughs> but anyways, he's gonna Volt Switch, and it looks like it's offensive based on how much damage that did, but I'm not really sure, I can't really be sure here. 
Um, but anyways, uh, here, this this was really annoying. I wanted to Volt Switch out because I wasn't sure if he was going to predict my switch to my Town Flame. Uh, so I stayed in to take the Mega Horn, but he gets a critical hit, which is so annoying. I'm fairly, fairly certain I could have definitely lived that Mega Horn there. Especially considering he does not have a Life Orb. Um, but either way, I'm just going to go out to my Talon Flame here, and I'm going to go straight for the Brave Bear. Like I said, it was really annoying that he got that critical hit, because I'm pretty sure I would have been able to live. Unless he's like banded or something. But even so, I mean, my Rotom has max HP and defense, so I don't know if he would have killed me in one hit from where I was regardless. But anyways, I take him out with the Brave Bear, which is fine. Uh, get that big threat out of here. Um, so... I'm going to be able to, um, you know, run around freely with my Talon Flame. I was really worried about him using uh, uh, Rock Slide when I switched in my Talon Flame, which is why I stayed in with my Rotom. But anyways, I'm going to switch out. I'm going to go to my Vato, and um, this is my Paralyzed Easy Slide, so there's really nothing to lose here. He's actually going to go straight for the Hydro Pump. Uh, I actually avoid it, which is, uh, you know, some nice justice for, uh, you know, getting hit with that critical hit. And the uh, para hex. <laughs> So that's good. I mean, this thing should have died a long time ago because the Shadow Ball probably would have killed it from where it was. But anyways, he's going to go out to the Feral Thorn. I predicted the Gliscor to come in because he actually doesn't know that I'm special at this point in time. So I thought he was going to send out the Gliscor. Um, but it turns out that he sends out the Feral Thorn. But the Shadow Ball is still going to do a decent amount to this thing, which is pretty surprising to me. I mean, it doesn't resist it anymore, but I don't know. I didn't expect it to do a freaking third to it. Uh, but either way, I actually get the Special Defense drop. Uh, it would have been a 3 at KO regardless. So uh, I'm actually going to be able to go for another Shadow Ball here. And it's going to do a ton of damage. He gets left with barely any HP. And it was here that I started to kick myself. I don't know why I didn't go for the Sacred Sword. I had it in the back of my mind that he might want to save that Feral Thorn for later. But as it, as it turns out, I actually ended up going for the uh, Shadow Ball again. Even though it, it was a Feral Thorn. Okay, well first I knew he is. He didn't have Leftover, so I knew he most likely had a Rocky Helmet. And uh, the Rocky Helmet would have been annoying had I hit him. But... Um, either way, I had no reason not to go for Sacred Sword because uh, Sacred Sword is going to hit both the Tyranitar and the Feral Thorn. So I probably should have gone for the Sacred Sword right there. I normally do that, but I don't know why I didn't this time. But anyways, I go straight for the King Shield because uh, I wanted to lower his attack. And for, first of all, I'm in I'm in uh, you know Blade form, so I'm, I'll die to any move he hits me with, except for Stone Edge, of course. Um, but second, I wanted to be um, I wanted to stay in and take the hit. So that I could, uh, you know, to kill him next turn. So um, here I'm actually going to go for the uh, Sacred Sword again. Well, not again. I'm going to go for the Sacred Sword. And uh, it's obviously not going to do anything to the Glide Score. But I do have that Rotom. So I can pretty much switch that in when Oh, no, I don't. It died. Ah! <laughs> the Rotom died. What I meant to say is that I have the Excadrill. And I know for a fact he's going to go for the uh, Earthquake right here. Because uh, he probably can't risk me setting up or doing anything like that. He knows I have that Shadow Ball that's really, really powerful. So he's actually going to go for the Earthquake, like I said. And uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to rapid spin those rocks that the Ferrothorn set up uh, earlier. Um, because I had the Talon Flame. And I don't really care about him breaking my balloon. Because the balloon is pretty much to ensure that I get um, you know, a rapid spin off against ground types. And that's exactly what happened. So he's actually going to go for the Ice Fang. It does absolutely nothing to me, but I mean, he just wanted to break my balloon, obviously. So I get the rocks out of there. My Talon Flame is free to wreak havoc later on. <laughs> and, uh, I'm just going to switch out here. I'm going to go out to my Talon Flame now. Uh, I, I'm not really sure what I wanted to do here, to be honest. I, I was probably just going to try and bait him to do something. Uh, do something different, but it looks like he made the right play here. He actually went out to his Tyranitar. I'm not sure if that was smart, but it, it looked like he definitely predicted a switch there because he knew that I was not going to uh, stay in against his Glide Score, so that was a good move on his part. Talonflame can do absolutely nothing to Tyranitar, so I'm definitely going to be forced to switch here. <laughs> I gotta get the hell up out of here before that Tyranitar crushes my soul. I'm gonna go out to my Excadrill. It seems like he predicts that because he goes straight for the Crunch. And the crunch is going to kill my Excadrill. But I switched it in as um, I switched it in as Death Fodder anyways. I didn't switch it in to do any damage. I switched it in just in case he did go for the crunch. I needed something to die that wasn't Talon Flame. I needed something to die so I can bring out my Mega Kangaskhan and start to crush some souls. So he is actually gonna go out to his Feral Thorn as Death Fodder, and this is gonna confirm my suspicions of him having the uh, Rocky helmet because I'm actually gonna hit his uh, Feral Thorn with a power-up punch. 
uh, predicting him to either stay in or switch to his Feral Thorn. So even if he switched to his Feral Thorn, I still want to do plus one attack boost from the first power up punch from the Mega Kings Con. And like I said, he actually has the Rocky Helmet. So it's going to do a ton of damage to me. I'm going to lose around 30% this turn, 12% uh, from the Rocky Helmet. 12% from the Iron Barbs and 6% from the Sandstorm. So that's a clean 30% gone just from hitting this stupid Feral Thorn and the Sandstorm combined. So uh, luckily for me, he didn't have enough HP to take two power up punches. Otherwise, I would have lost a clean 50% in one turn. 50, 54% in one turn. Jesus Christ. Um, so anyways, I am going to go for the return. Glide score, what, what you doing, man? Uh, here, I actually get a critical hit. And... Um, as you can see, because of the parental bond and the amount of damage that critical hits do now, uh, a normal return would have done as much as the first hit with the critical hit. So basically what I'm saying is if I hadn't got the critical hit, he would have been left with that little amount of HP that he had before uh, taking the second hit. Um, so, uh, Karma man, Karma. He crit my Rotom, I crit his Glide score. <laughs> That's how it goes around here sometimes, mate. Um, but anyways, I'm easily going to be able to take out his Gyarados. Bop, bada, boom, bat, pow. Oh! <laughs> and his last Pokemon is... Uh, wait, no. Is this his last Pokemon? It's one of his last Pokemon. Uh, this Rotom's about to die, obviously. I'm just going to go for the power up punch, get another attack boost. And, oh, no. His last Pokemon is his Tyranitar. He knew not to go out to it because he knew that it would die a very, very, very painful death from two power up punches. Uh, but obviously, I'm at plus two. Power up punch is easily, easily going to take out the Tyranitar. No question to ask. So, uh, there's that. <laughs> there is that. Get up out. What you doing? Use some unknown lanes Gen 2 out. Ruins. Good game, Tyranitar 2. Um, you're getting better, though. I see the improvement. I see the improvement every day. Every time we battle, I see some improvement. So, uh, that's very nice. I, I, I see you, man. I see you. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And we will be back tomorrow with another Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi battle. Bye. I'm out this piece. Indeed. Mm, yummy.